Hello and welcome. On September 28, Matt Turk released his 8th annual landscape and state of the union of the data and AI ecosystem, this time co-authored with his first mark colleague John Boo. The annual landscape describes the current state of the MAD ecosystem, that is, machine learning, AI and data. This article gives a very extensive overview of the market and it comes with a visual illustration with all the different companies by domain. The visual contains different categories that attempt to group players by what they are providing in terms of products or services. Matt and John are both active at Firstmark, a well-known New York VC firm with investments in successful companies like Pinterest, Shopify and Airbnb. In this video, we'll give a short overview of the current trends in the market. Let's dive in. The trends for this year are a busy year for data ops, it's time for real-time, metric stores, reverse ETL and finally data sharing. We'll kick things off with the data mesh. The general concept of the data mesh is decentralization. Create independent data teams that are responsible for their own domain and provide data as a product to others within the organization. The term data mesh was first introduced in a 2019 article when Zamak Dehani described data as a product within the organization. A standard approach to building data infrastructure and teams so far has been centralization. One big platform managed by one data team that serves the needs of business users. This has advantages, but it can also create a number of issues, like certain bottlenecks. Data Mesh aims to address these issues. Second on our list is a busy year for data ops. Data ops is a term that is used for a lot of different things. The term calls for a structured approach to everything related to data, whether it's infrastructure, consumption of data, compliance or security, and so on. The broad context is that data engineering tools and practices are still very much behind the level of sophistication and automation of their software engineering cousins. A lot of startups are aiming to improve this state. Some fields include data observability, data quality and data access and governance. For example, Colibra, a software company from my home country Belgium, provides data catalog capabilities. Basically, an inventory of available data that helps analysts find the data they need. Third on our list, it's time for real-time. Real-time refers to consumption of data immediately after it has been generated. For years, real-time data streaming was always the market segment that was about to explode in a very major way, but never quite did. With this year's Confluent IPO, this segment is finally living up to its potential. We're halfway through our list, so I wanted to throw in a statistic here just to show you how much this market is growing. VC funding of startups is up 159% year-on-year -year globally to 165 billion in Q2 2021. Startups are raising a ton of capital and the positive sentiment also led to some big IPOs this year. We're also seeing high valuations in the private market, which for some begs the question of how long we can continue on this trend. The fourth item that Matt mentions in his list are metric stores. Imagine that you're in sales and you're being evaluated for every sale that you make. You might feel like the point in which the customer signs a contract is the moment that you made a sale. While for the financial department of the company, they might define a sale as when the customer makes the payment. Metric stores aim to standardize definition of key business metrics and all of its dimensions and provide stakeholders with accurate analysis ready data sets based on those definitions. It's a define once use anywhere approach, something that can benefit a lot of organizations out there and definitely a trend to watch in the coming months. Fifth one on the list is reverse ETL. So we've had ETL, which stands for Extract, Transfer and Load. Then we've had players like Fivetrend focusing on ELT. And now we're noticing the rise of players in the reverse ETL space. 
With the modern data stack, warehouses have become the single source of truth for all business data, which has historically been spread across various application layer business systems. Reverse ETL tooling sits on the opposite side of the warehouse from typical ETL or ELT tools and they enable teams to move data from their data warehouse back into business applications like CRMs, marketing automation systems or customer support platforms to make use of the data in their functional business processes. If you want to learn more about reverse ETL, you can read the article of Astasia Myers, which I'll link in the description. Our final trend is data sharing. Organizations are becoming increasingly aware that their data is valuable, not only to them, but also to other parties. And I first came across this concept of data sharing when reading Frank Slootman's book, Rise of the Data Cloud. Frank is a CEO of Snowflake. In his book, he describes how organizations can share data with both their suppliers and customers and gain real-time insights on changing inventory levels, supply chain issues, or changing customer demands. Snowflake has an active data marketplace with over 800 datasets from more than 200 organizations providing this data. Companies can use this data in their machine learning models without having to capture it themselves and perform market research, clinical studies, or just further fine-tune their own model. It's a remarkable trend and likely a growing market for the coming years. So, that was it for our coverage of the article. I highly recommend you to read it yourself and I wish you a lot of luck in your own career path. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.